Welcome back to HQ. You're getting a look at some of the big trades that went down at the NFL trade deadline. Of course, the Vikings trading for a quarterback, getting Josh Dobbs with Kirk Cousins out for the season with a torn Achilles. The Commanders, they were very active, trading Montez Sweat to the Chicago Bears, also trading Chase Young to the 49ers. The Packers uh, trading Rasul Douglas to the Bills. Just some of the big trades that have gone down for 2023. And we're going to talk winners and we're going to talk losers. And we have the full squad to break it all down. We got BMAC, we have Rick Spielman, and Pete Prisco. Um, gentlemen, when you're looking at all of the trades, and Rick, I'll start with you. Give us your, your winners from the trade deadline. Yeah, I'm going to go with the Seattle Seahawks and then picking up Leonard Williams. When you look at their defensive tackle situation with Reed, with Jones, with Mario Edwards Jr., they needed to add depth. And in order to make a push in the playoffs, and right now Seattle is on top, the NFC West, they have at the end of the month, the 49ers coming up twice, Dallas and Philadelphia, they're going to have to have a defensive line rotation. And by adding Leonard Williams, who back in 2020 had 11 and a half sacks, his sacks have gone down over the last couple of years, but he's still disruptive as a pass rusher. So I thought this was a great trade to then throw in adding Frank Clark. They're ready to roll the second half of the season. And my winner is the 49ers and Chase Young. Chase Young gets to go to a contender, uh, a team that can be dominant once they figure out this pass rush, and he's going to be a big part of it. Look, the 49ers gave up 653 passing yards, five touchdowns, and only had one pick, and they didn't get a sack against Minnesota in the past two games. They needed to do something. Now you line up Chase Young, Bosa, the two interior guys, Armstead and Hargrave, they can get after the quarterback. And I think that's what you have to do. You have to be able to score points. We got to be able to knock the other guy's quarterback down. Getting Chase Young big for him, huge for the 49ers. Well, my biggest winner is the Buffalo Bills. You know, add in Razul Douglas, a guy who has really played outstanding football for the Green Bay Packers. When you look at that area of need for the Buffalo Bills, became a big time necessity when they lost Tredavious White weeks ago to a season ending injury. Depth was a major concern and just having consistent play. Now, Christian Benford has played pretty good football. Well, you have to imagine once Razul gets caught up to speed defensively, he becomes that number one corner for their defense. And then in their division alone, if you don't have quality sound corners, defensive backs, good luck in trying to slow down the Miami Dolphins. So this was a big area of concern for the Buffalo Bills, and they instantly got better today, adding Douglas. Yeah, Buffalo's in a third round pick and then got Douglas plus a fifth rounder. All right, guys, so we have all the winners. Want to talk about your losers. And Pete, I want to start with you because Chris Hassel, he always gives you a hard time saying that they're your Jacksonville Jaguars, that you are the mayor of Jacksonville, but they're actually on, on your, your losers list. You're holding them accountable uh, for the trade deadline. Well, I thought they had to get a pass rusher in the trade deadline. And look, this team is talented across the board. They've won five straight games. They're 6-2. and two. They're probably going to end up with the number one seed in the AFC. So why not go for it? This is your year to go for it. They can't, could not trade the second, third, or fourth round pick, in large part because they made a bad decision and they tied them all to the Calvin Ridley trade, every single one of them. So the only pick they could have traded uh, that would have been worth it to go get a guy like Chase Young would have been the first first round pick. Well, if you're that good, you're going to have to be picking at 32 if you think you're going to get a pass rusher and amp things up to that degree. So I thought they should have went for it. They should have done everything in their power to get Chase Young or Montez Sweat or maybe even call the Vikings again to try and get Daniil Hunter. They made a mistake. Now, they were in on Josh Uche from the Patriots. They couldn't work out a deal, something about fourth and fifth round compensation. If they wanted a four, you should have given it to them. The Jacksonville Jaguars are poised to go get a Super Bowl. They made a mistake by not getting an edge rusher. Well, my biggest loser is actually winning a lot of ball games, similar to the Jacksonville Jaguars. It's the Detroit Lions. I'm right there with you in regards to playoff caliber teams going all, all in, especially if you haven't been known to be a household name in regards to championship aspirations. The Detroit Lions, outstanding years so far, offensively doing big time things. The same can be said on the defensive side. But not adding a pass rusher to Aiden Hutchinson, I feel like that was a missed opportunity. Pete, you talked about some of the names that were moved. Sweat. Young, 
other potential names for the Detroit Lions trying to find a way to add one of those guys would have been huge for their defense. So you didn't add a pass rusher, already a concern in my opinion, but you allow a guy by the name of Chase Young to go to the San Francisco 49ers, a team you potentially might see in the postseason. So you didn't add him. You allow him to go to a potential postseason foe. Good luck if that happens in, in the near future. But me personally, I think they were one player or two away from making things extremely dicey, not just in the division, because I think they're going to win the division. But I'm talking about making a significant postseason run for a championship, adding a defensive player that can put pressure on opposing quarterback would have been huge for the Detroit Lions. Uh, BMAC, I want to say the only way they're going to see them in a the postseason is if they're watching them on TV because the Washington Commanders are going nowhere. And interesting to see, was this a directive from the ownership group? Because you have two premier pass rushers. I know you got a second round pick and a third round pick, but who's going to rush the pass for the rest of the season? What message is that sending in the locker room? What message is that sending to the front office and head coach if the directive from the ownership group said, get rid of these two guys. They paid two defensive tackles in Payne and Allen, but who's going to rush the passer for the rest of the season? It sounds like they're getting ready to pack it in, especially when you get give away talented pass rushers like Young and like Sweat. Yeah, we thought it would be one or the other. Chase Young or Montez Sweat and the Commanders, very, very active at the trade deadline, uh, trading both of those guys. We have Pete Prisco, Rick Spielman, and BMAC talking winners and losers from the trade deadline. Thank you so much, guys. We appreciate it. And you can hear BMAC on the All Things Covered podcast alongside Patrick Peterson in the latest episode. They're talking about the Steelers' loss to the Jags, the officiating in that game, and also previewing Pittsburgh's matchup with the Titans. You can download and listen wherever you find your pods or scan that QR code on your